All right, welcome everybody. Eugene here, Hughes Motorized. This is part two of my multi-part video series. Hopefully where I'm going to show you what you need to know in order to get your little no starting two stroke engine to start. Okay. Now the first one, I went over some of the basics of how these engines run. Um, I showed you how to start one. Um, I then blathered on about suck, squish, bang, blow. Today, I'm just adding some tools to your tool box that you're going to carry around that you're going to need when, when you try to diagnose a no start condition here. This isn't the first thing you're going to check, but this is the first thing in our little list, sucking. That's referring to how we're sucking in air and fuel in the intake. This is a, an engine that I cut in half, okay? So it's mirror image. The yellow area here is your intake. The red area here is your exhaust. The blue are your transfer ports, and you got transfer ports in the exact same location behind the piston. And the white area here is where your crank assembly rides. So how does it work? It works very similar to this syringe here. When I pull up on it, the plunger rises, creates a vacuum, and it'll suck liquid or air in. This here's doing the same thing. Okay, one little important nugget of information that uh, I want to point out, and it's very obvious to some, but you know, hey, we all got to learn somewhere. If you've got, let's say, a big old hole in your piston, well, you're not going to be creating suction like this guy here would. Or you got a big old chunk taken out here inside your cylinder. You can have air sucking in and around and about where you don't want it. You're not going to create the suction in order to suck the air in. So uh, that's, that's an absolute fundamental. If you're missing your piston ring or, you know, pieces of the piston ring, you know, well, I got 80% of it on. Well, no, you need all of both rings on in order to create that suction we're talking about. Let me blather on to you about how this guy works here and why, the, why I have this as a teaching aid. In order for this guy to work, we want a perfect, the ideal 16 to 1 air-fuel ratio. 16 parts air, one part fuel, thanks to your carburetor, going into our combustion chamber so we can uh, Ignite it with our spark plug, we get our bang, and we're blowing down the road. So we're sucking in fuel, all right? So your piston is going up. It's acting just like this syringe here. When I raise it, we're creating a vacuum. We're sucking in air or liquid here at the tip. This here is turning counterclockwise. Your piston is going up. Your piston rings seal on the cylinder here. And here's your exhaust port. So just as soon as this ring here covers the exhaust port, we are now sealed all the way down here, and we are creating a vacuum here. It's moving very fast, so you'll get a little leakage here in the exhaust port, but it's not that much, okay? So actually, because of your expansion chamber, you're getting a wave back, but that's a little bit more complex, but trust me on that one, all right? So we're sealed here. We are compressing air and fuel that got into our combustion chamber, and I'm going to show you how it gets in there. We're creating a vacuum here, and just as soon as this piston skirt clears the intake, we're going to be sucking air in because we got a vacuum here, sucking in air and fuel here. The piston gets the top of the stroke. We have a lot of compression. If your ignition gods are smiling on you, you get a spark from the spark plug. When this is at what we call top dead center, the, the the uh, piston is all the way at the top. You get that bang. It starts pushing the piston down. While your piston is traveling down, we got stuff going on on both sides of it. So you have the expanding gas from the combustion forcing the piston down. And while we're doing that, we're compressing the case. So that's why it's, it's critical that we have a good sealed system here in the case. The piston is blocking the intake port so nothing is escaping there it's traveling down and just as it the piston rings clear the exhaust port 
exhaust gas, the spent air and fuel, is going out the exhaust port. We are compressing the fresh air and fuel in the engine case. Here's your transfer ports. You see they're starting to open up. When that's happening, your compressed air and fuel is now rushing into the combustion chamber. It's also helping push some of the exhaust gas out, and yet we're going to push some unburned fuel out. It's just the nature of the way this thing is designed. Okay, it, it goes all the way to the bottom, and then we're starting back up again. We're creating suction here and we're starting to compress our fuel and we repeat over and over again. We need a magic number of 16 parts air to one part fuel to be sucked into this engine in order for it to run. You got a little wiggle room. Wiggle room. You get a little bit more air or a little bit less, it may run rough, but it'll start. We're talking about no start here, okay? If you're missing those parameters and you got an intake leak or something like that, either A, it's not going to start, period, or if it starts, it'll run bad. So I want to show you what to look for in the sucking realm of this, uh, this, this operation here. Okay, so we're sucking in fuel. Let's talk about that. You've got two areas that can be a problem. Either we're not sucking in any fuel whatsoever or not enough, or we're getting too much gas in there. If we're getting too much gas in there, we would have a very wet spark plug. Pull it, it's got a lot of gas on it. You may have gas dribbling out the back of your uh, carburetor here, out the air filter. Dribbling out this area here with this style air filter cover. And that's a pretty easy fix. That means most of the time, your problem is going to be right here. Your, your fuel line goes into the carburetor. You've got a little plastic float there that's filled with air. At least it should be filled with air. If it's filled with gas, there's our problem. Um, and it rises up, and it raises a little pin here to shut off the gas. So if we're dribbling gas and it's not starting, we need to clean the carburetor. And I've got a link to a video down there. That you can that uh, that's pretty good good one here on servicing the carburetor. Okay, so that's how you fix that particular problem. So what do we check if we're not getting any gas and our spark plug is dry after trying to start it? You look at the tip of the plug, smell it. There's no gas smell on it. That means we're not getting any gas. Well, we want to do a process of elimination. Do we have gas in the gas tank? Is your fuel pet cock turned in the on position? Pull your gas line off your carburetor, and are we dribbling gas out? Put it back on real quick. Hey, don't do it around the campfire or anything like that. Um, if we're not getting gas there, well, maybe this little strainer inside the gas tank, your petcock that goes inside the gas tank, is clogged up. I remedy that, that little uh, threat by just tossing it. I only use the inline fuel filter. Okay? So... We got gas coming to the carburetor. We're not getting any gas to the spark plug. The culprit would be the jet. Uh, maybe we got something <clears throat> gunked up and jammed up in the carburetor. We're going to remove the carburetor. We've got this screw here next to the plunger. And we've got this screw here on the other side. Remove that. Pull the bolt. You've got your main jet here. You may have a clogged main jet. And in the video showing how to service the carburetor, um, it, it'll tell you how to clean the jet. So you may just need to clean the jet. That'll be your problem there. Okay, so we've covered the fuel issues. Let's talk about what some people will call an intake leak, an air leak, and the like. That's part of our little squishing list checklist here. Okay, so... Quite often the problem is the carburetor is not fully pushed onto the intake. Here. Now I've removed the clamp so you can see. You've got these four notches cut into the throat, so I call it of the carburetor, and that allow, allows the opening to expand a little bit so you can push it in, push the intake into the carburetor. Now, this type of what I call the tubing type. It's just a steel tubing. Sometimes 
when they cut this thing here, they don't deburr it. No, they never deburr it. Okay? So if you've got a big hunk of metal hanging off the edge of this here, that can be a reason why it's not going in all the way. And you may be sucking air in. But let's talk about the going in all the way. See that there's a little stop right here. There, there, there's an area where you can only push, push the uh, intake in so far and it stops. You want to make sure that you have got this thing fully pushed onto the intake. Otherwise, you're going to be sucking air in these four little cuts here. And that's plenty of air that would cause this thing not to start, okay? Because you're not going to be sucking in enough fuel through the carburetor. You're going to be getting way too much air in here, and you're not going to be getting enough fuel in, okay? Now, here is a cast intake. And this one here has a shoulder on it. And you can pretty much tell when you've got it fully pushed on is that this part of the carburetor throat here is almost touching that shoulder on the intake. So that's one way to look at it. Now, some people will say, put an O-ring in there, and that'll eliminate the possibility of an air leak in, from this area here. You know what? That's lazy. As long as you've got, and I'm too cheap to buy an O-ring, okay? As long as you've got this carburetor pushed in firmly, got it clamped tight, you're good to go. Now, with this particular one here, this stout here, sometimes I'll, have, I'll take a file and file off any extra metal, the burrs that are left from manufacturing that they don't clean off, okay? So, this is a very common thing that you want to look for. That'll be a cause of way too much air entering into the engine. Another cause of it might be the intake gasket. Either the intake gasket hey, is missing, is not installed correctly, is damaged, or our intake is simply just not bolted in tight enough. That, that could be a problem. Some other areas that, that, that are key to maintaining, to getting that 16 to 1, will be your cylinder base gasket and your crankcase gasket along with your crankshaft seal. Now let me show you how you can test those using a rubber hose. Let me get this out of the way. This engine here, I blocked off the exhaust port. I got a piece of 1 8 inch steel, cut it bigger than the size of the exhaust gasket. There's an, a gasket on behind this here, and then I drilled holes here, and we're using this to blank this thing off. What we're going to do is we're going to pressure test the engine and see where it's leaking from, okay? So you get you a rubber hose, three-quarter inch inside diameter that will fit over the intake, put you a hose clamp on it, and then you simply blow in on the other end here, and you, you want to blow in and hold it and maintain the pressure, and you we're going to check it for leaks. Now, I've got, eh, I'm not going to say a super high-tech solution here. This here, I can utilize my air pump to pressurize it up. I've just got a Schrader valve, quarter-inch T, got the Pressure gauge here goes up to 30. We don't need anywhere near that. 5 PSI is as much as you want to go. Like I said, you, you, can, you can use your mouth by blowing on the hose just as easy. Then we've got a quarter inch pipe nipple, a quarter to three eighths inch bell reducer, three eighths inch pipe nipple. Got the hose, a clamp, and then another clamp that will go on there and we can pressure it up. So what we're going to want to check is the crankshaft seal on the magneto side, and I've got the magneto removed so we can see it. The crankshaft seal here where the drive bevel gear is. We want to check the cylinder base gasket. We can do that using this method. And then of course we can check the intake gasket, the crankcase gasket. Um, I've even rarely seen, I've seen issues with holes in the engine case itself. 
where, where it's leaked. And um, sometimes you have to be a detective and search and look for these clues here. But what we can do is get us some water, put us some dish soap in it, and I'll use a little brush. As long as we're getting some bubbles in our water, we're good to go. And then what we're going to do is hook our hose up, put some pressure on it. So let's get to testing here, okay? I got my little gizmo hooked up to apply the pressure. Let's put some soapy bubbles on this crankshaft seal here. No leak there. We've got the uh, cylinder base gasket. No major leaks there. Now you can see some bubbles on my table there, so that's, that's not from the engine. But we're going to see some bubbles here in just a minute, okay? So the cylinder base gasket is checking out good. Be generous. Slosh that stuff everywhere. Now I'm pressing on my air pump right now. See these air bubbles bubbling out? Yep, we got us a leak. Is it catastrophic? No, it still might run even with that leak there. I might even hazard a guess. But if it's a lot worse, we're gonna, it's not going to run, right? So, yep, you can definitely see the bubbles there. And if you've got a bunch of air just rushing out, there's going to be your problem here. All right, so I hope you find this video helpful. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Leave a friendly comment down below there. Um, there's a subscribe button, notifications. Hey, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching.